Today we're going to show you how to tie uh, extended body mayflies in uh, one entire piece out of a foam. And we're going to use uh, a laminated foam, which I'll show you more of in a little bit. <coughs> and this is the way we do this is do it all in one piece, in one step, without using needles or other apparatus. And you have to really have this type of a vise to do this fly. So you can tie flies all the way from uh, 24s, 26s, all the way up to as big as hexes or whatever size you want. Foam is available in many, many colors. And we put the two pieces of foam together by using carpet tape. And so you can have one color on one side, another color on the other. And as you know, most mayflies have a sort of a tan or a different color underneath than they do on top. This is a good example of the different color of mayflies you can have. This is the bottom color. And then you could have a brown top or olive top like for olive browns or olive flies and also different thicknesses so that you can tie a fly of that size or a large one by different thickness of the foam sheets that have been pasted together. So to start with we'll just go ahead and and talk a little bit about the hooks and uh, what we use here for hooks is a TMCO hook that can be bent. This is a normal uh, scud type hook that you can be able to bend at right angles up on top. And all these flies will be going, I'll probably see if we can't get this in here, <clears throat> by taking the, this hook and bending it at a right angle we will build the fly on top of on top of this hook. And uh, we can just start out and I'll talk about each step as we go. First we'll go ahead and put a thread base like any fly that you would tie. Like so. And then we'll cut out, this is going to be a big fly, so we're going to cut out the foam and basically just cut it out on an angle, just like that. And you have the two colors and this time we're going to go ahead and Put the orange on the bottom and the green on top. And when we tie this fly, we'll just make two segments. There's the first. And then we'll put another one in here, just like so. And this is where we go in and make the tail like we have on, on the sample I showed you. And the way that we do that is we use a microfilament that comes in a V-shape, much like this one. I sort of darkened it up so you might be able to see it. It's very difficult. I just use clear ones when I tie the fly, but I thought I'd darken it up so that you could see that it's actually in a V-shape. And we just split the thread, put it on top, make one turn, Lay it on top of this thing here. Decide how long we're going to have the body. You know, this is about right here. And then it's a matter of taking it, flipping it over, and working its way up to the tip of the tail. Using the little finger to throw it over. When you get up to the top of the tail, you have one extra loop. And then you just come down. And as you're coming down, each segment will have a diamond shape. When you get back to the base, put an extra turn in it. Tip what's going to be the head up and put a couple turns in front of it. The reason we do that is we don't want to put pressure and kink the tail. Then we'll go underneath. Lay the head back, make the head, and the fly is almost completed. All we have to do now is decide whether we want a deer hair wing 
or a parachute and I'll show you both. First we'll take the deer hair, take the scissors, take a little bundle, and you can stack it if you like. I sort of like it, just take it the way it cuts. You lay it over this first top crease here. There's a crease there, and we're going to lay that hair right up, right up there. And then go around and pull down on it nice and tight. And that'll stand that hair right straight up. Like so. And we'll cut away the back part of it. And you'll have the hair just like so. And that gives you the wing. Just the I don't have quite enough hair there, but you get the idea. And your fly is complete. All we'd have to do is uh, go back here, split these fibers, and cut away what I could call the handle. That was We needed that part to go ahead and, and wind up and make the tail. So we'll go right behind it and cut that away like so and there would be the complete fly straighten that out we could have used a little more hair in there okay then for the parachute we we'll use the same body and what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and show you how that is done throw away this rest of this hair and what I use for the post on these flies is a seat belt material taken out of automobiles it comes like this, as you recognize. You just cut off this edge and cut off that edge, and then you pull everything off, except leaving a little bunch in the center to keep all these fibers together. And what we're interested in is these fibers that are inside, and every bundle is the same. So you can just pull out a bundle for this size fly, like so, and that'll be your be your post. And what we do to make it a little more attractive on the water is we'll go ahead and use ribbon material. And this will pull this silver looking stuff off, like so. Add it to this bundle. And then we'll go ahead and go to make the post. We just go underneath the fly straight up. Take one turn around the post, and there is your post. And now all you have to do is add the feather. The nice thing about using seat belt is it's, it's very rigid and stands up fish after fish after fish. And as this fly is floating down the water, when we get it all done and trim this off, you'll be able to see this fly a great distance away from you. And, it's just, and then it's just a matter of going ahead and wrapping the, the post and we'll just real quickly you all know how to make uh, parachute fly so uh, I just just put a turn behind it one in front of it and then just go ahead and the post is rigid enough so you don't even have to handle it to wrap the feather just you put on as many turns as you're comfortable with I like a lot of turns. Some people like only one or two turns. And then to tie this off, instead of tying it off at the eye, just go around through the feather twice. And then just tie it. <coughs> go around the eye of the hook. Use your whip finisher. And your fly is almost complete. You hold the feather up. Come down. Cut that. Now we'll trim this post on an angle, front to back, like so. And when you fish it, you just sort of tap it down a little bit like that, and there's a completed fly. The only other thing we have to do now is to go ahead and use a little bit of super glue. This is what I use. It's available in dollar stores, uh, and it's a liquid. And you sort of have to make something to handle it so you don't glue yourself to the table when you're tying flies. And this is just a simple 
it's cardboard, bent in half, poke a hole in it, and put your super glue in it. So this would be the dispenser. All you have to do is just tip it forward and get just a very little bit of the glue and you notice the bottle goes back so it doesn't spill on here and you don't glue yourself to the table. And you would just apply a little bit underneath and just a touch where the tail is and your fly is completed. And you can tie these flies all the way from hex size all the way down to size 22 or 24s. I don't go below 22s. That seems to be good. There is examples of those flies on here. There's some 22s and 20s. And there are some bigger ones. And you can tie, every one of them is tied identically the same as I just showed you. So if you tie 22s, you tie them the same way. The only difference is you're going to use a very thin uh, laminate as compared to a side fly of this size where it's going to be much thicker. That's the only two things. And that basically is how you tie the extended body in one easy step. That's it. I enjoyed showing you this and I think with a little practice you'll be amazed how well and how fast these go. And uh, I hope that you do try them. Thank you.